promise. And the promise is repeated. And God follows her and chases after her numerous times. We have a story of God giving value to one who is valueless. Well, this week, as I was thinking about this story of Hagar and Ishmael and God, um, I was also thinking some about my giving to the church because I'll be getting one of these pledge cards in the mail next week too. And as I think about giving to the church, that question always is always transformed into, well, why do I give to the church? Why do I believe in the church? That's the question that ends up coming in my head because I don't give to things I don't believe in. And so for me, it boils down to one, gratitude, and two, stories like this story of Hagar and Ishmael and God. Now, as far as gratitude is concerned, <clears throat> I've, always been, I've always been aware of the gifts that I've received, or at least some of them, and aware that I need to give thanks for those, or have this desire to give thanks. It's been at the heart of my faith for as long as I can remember. And these last few weeks, I've been um, trying a meditation exercise. I came across the suggestion that when you're meditating, ask the question, well, what am I? So I thought, okay. So in my prayer time, I say my personal prayers, and I quiet myself for 15 minutes or so, and then I started asking this question, what am I? And my thoughts would go to my breakfast, as I'm the breakfast I ate that day. So I started thinking about my oatmeal and the water and the blueberries on my oatmeal. That I'm this water that came from under my house in the groundwater deep in the earth. I am that water. And I started thinking about the farmer who grew my oats somewhere. And I'm dependent upon this person that I don't know. And that farmer used machinery and there were lots of people who were building this machinery. And that machinery depended upon oil that came from deep in the earth too. That was there because of millions of years of plants and animals decaying and turning into this, this liquid. And I was dependent upon the soil and the earthworms in the soil and the microorganisms in the soil and the sunshine and the rain. I'm dependent upon creation in so many different ways. That creation is me. And my son, Simon, he likes to scoop out the oatmeal these days, so he scoops my oatmeal in the morning and I'm dependent upon him. And I don't always wash the dishes, so I'm dependent upon the dishwasher for my bowl too. And this is just breakfast. And I'm, as I'm thinking about all of these people and all these aspects of creation that I'm dependent upon and that I'm a part of, I start losing my sense of self. I fall back into that. I realize I'm a part of the earth and a part of other people in so many other ways. And I have this deep sense of gratitude that comes up in me. And I need a place where I can offer that. And the church provides that place. Our faith provides that framework. This is a place where we can offer our gratitude. And we offer that gift to the community. This is a place where the community can come and offer their gratitude to God. And in the same way, we hope that as we offer that gratitude, that this gratitude is then nurtured, that we might go out into the world as more grateful people. But besides the gratitude, these stories of God valuing one who is valueless providing an alternative vision for how we treat one another is extremely important to me. And we see these stories all throughout the scriptures. We see them, for example, when Jesus defends the prostitute and says, you who are without sin, throw the first stone. We see them in the parable of the Good Samaritan, where it's the Samaritan who shows compassion for the Israelite, even though they're enemies. We see it in the story of Saul in the early church, Saul oversees persecution. He oversees the stoning of Stephen. And then he encounters Jesus Christ and his world is turned upside down and the church welcomes him in. This enemy, this church shows compassion on Saul. And then Saul becomes Paul and he becomes the most important figure in the growth of the early church. We see it in the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. That Jesus is crucified by the powers of the state and the religious authorities because they're afraid of him and the way that he's caring for those who are broken and poor and outcast who don't fit into their vision of what's important. They don't know what to do with him and they crucify him. And from the cross he says, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. And God doesn't allow this love to die but raises it up. Through these stories and so many others in our scriptures we hear this clear message from God where God says, I am for the outcast. I am for the vulnerable and the weary 
and the broken. I am for those who aren't seen as valuable in your midst. And when you are one of those people who is wounded or weary or broken or feeling like you aren't valued in the way you should be, know that I am with you. I am present with you. And I am working in your midst to bring some change for you and for everyone. And for all of my people, know that I promise to bless you. I promise to do good for you so that you can be a blessing, so that you can share in this work of mine in the world of bringing wholeness and bringing healing. Now, I believe in this. This matters. I think this is incredibly important. And these stories that we carry and God's word in them is a powerful alternative to our own individual failures and the failures of us, of uh, human beings collectively as we live together. I don't know about you, but I know for myself, there are times when I'm very engaged in the problems that are present around the world and people's suffering and the problems that people around me are dealing with. And then there are times when I'm just not as engaged. Times when I'm just focusing on my own little world. And these stories, through these stories, God says to me, no, no, I bless you to be a blessing. Your world must be larger than just yourself. I want you to join with me and share in my work. And it turns me a bit, and that's extremely important. And we have in these stories as well an alternative vision of how we can live with one another. God says, never settle for a vision or actions in your world where some people are seen as more valuable than others. This will always lead to brokenness. It's a sign of brokenness, and it will lead to brokenness. Here's another way. Everyone is important. Even the most valueless among you, even those that people see as valueless among you, everyone is important. This is the way towards wholeness. Please join with me, and let's see what happens as we walk this way together. This matters. Our presence here and our ministry here matters. It shapes us and it shapes the world. So as you go from this place this week, I invite you to think carefully about about your giving and about why the church matters to you and to think prayerfully about what you are called to give. And then next week we'll come and you can bring your pledge cards with you and we'll give thanks to God for God's gifts to us. And then we will ask God's blessing on our gifts that we may be a blessing together as we do ministry in 2011. May it be so. Amen.